What's up Tarantula Collective? My name is Richard and today I am coming to you from uh, Blackwater Falls, Douglas Falls. I've been walking around the Mongahela State Forest. Um, where I'm at has nothing to do with tarantulas but it's Memorial Day. I'm out here with my wife running some errands and enjoying some forest bathing as she likes to call it. Just doing some hiking. But I was not going to be home in the basement with the tarantulas to shoot a normal Tarantula Tuesday video. So today I'm going to talk to you about being prepared for an emergency. Emergency preparedness for your tarantulas. Now whether you have one tarantula or a thousand tarantulas, part of being a responsible keeper or pet owner or it just a responsible person in general is to always kind of plan for the unexpected. Expect the unexpected, hope for the best, plan for the worst. So there's a couple different scenarios we're going to be talking about. So the first scenario we need to have a plan for is what I'm going to call uh, natural disasters. Things like flooding. I live near a creek, so I always got to be mindful of the level of the creek. If it rains or snows a lot, then I got to be worried that maybe Maybe that creek's gonna come out of its bank. But depending on your, where you live, there could be other things to worry about like earthquakes, uh, forest fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards, you know, any other kind of natural disaster we need to be ready and prepared for. The second type of scenario you want to be ready for are man-made disasters. Things like uh, if you live with your parents, them kicking you out of the basement, or uh, your girlfriend breaking up with you, or getting evicted, or selling your house, or you know anything like that, where you're uh, you're living with someone else, and all of a sudden those living arrangements change, or where you're living you can no longer live, and you got to move quickly. I mean, we really need to uh, understand that as tarantula keepers, and this goes for centipedes and snakes and reptiles and stuff like that, we really love the unlovable. You know, we're fascinated by things that terrify other people. And we can't expect our friends and family to accept our tarantulas, even if they're welcoming us into their home in our time of need. well over 200 tarantulas now. That doesn't even count the other invertebrates like beetles or scorpions, uh, and then reptiles like snakes and geckos and, and things like that. So I've not only made a plan A, but I've got a plan B and a plan C as well. You know, I live right by a creek, so there's always the fear that it may come out of its bank and flood my basement, which is where I keep all my collection. 
So my first plan is to just move everyone upstairs to the uh, extra bedroom. It's not ideal, uh, you know. It's it, they'd be very they would be very cramped in there, but it will at least get them out of the basement that's possibly flooded. I'm also lucky enough to have some room at the office where I work. So if push came to shove and they needed to get out of the house altogether, I have a backup there where I can make sure that they're safe. And again, it's not an ideal place, but it would only be temporary. And then just to be sure, uh, I went ahead and got a plan C. <laughs> just in case the first two ever fell through. Now in pretty much any city or town in America, there's at least a couple of places where you can rent a storage unit. Now where your basic storage unit is not gonna work, there are some that offer temperature controlled units. Now again, this is a very short-term solution. It's not somewhere you want to keep them, but if for some reason you ever needed to move out of your house very quickly or have somewhere safe to put them, it's good to do some research, find out where these places are located, how much it will cost, and know that you have that as an option on the back burner just in case you ever needed somewhere safe to store your collection. Now I'm sure they've got rules against having live animals and you know it, that probably varies place to place. As I've learned, it's usually better to ask for forgiveness than permission. But and again, you're not keeping them there as a place to keep your collection permanently. This is just somewhere in an emergency that you could store them temporarily. You know, this is a topic I see come up way too often in the Facebook group. You know, somebody broke up with their partner and has to move out and has nowhere to keep their teeth. Or their landlord is evicting them or has shut off the power to the apartment while they do repairs. I mean, there's a myriad of reasons that people are panicked and making posts, giving away their tarantulas or trying to find someone to house them temporarily very quickly or just selling them because they're frustrated with the hobby and not having anywhere to keep them safely. I mean, you really just need to have an honest and direct conversation with your friends or family. Tell them this is how many tarantulas I have is what type they are and in the case of an emergency where I have to evacuate my house would it be all right if I keep them with you it's never a good idea to just assume that they're welcome go ahead and, and have that tough conversation you know it's just talking you're just talking just asking them some questions you know they're not committing to take them right now but sometimes it's difficult for people to have a conversation asking for help but have a little humility and plan ahead and talk to your friends or family about the possibility of them letting your tarantula collection stay at their house in an emergency because the last thing we want to do when life's at its most stressful is have to deal with the hassle of trying to sell our teas quickly and cheaply to get rid of them or just giving them away no one wants to give away their prize but Sessions. So we figured out where we're going to move them. Now let's consider how we're going to move them. You know, again, I'm working under the assumption that time is of the essence. You know, the power's off at your house. Uh, the forest fires are getting closer. The floodwaters are rising. A blizzard or hurricane is on its way. So we need to get this done quickly. And in times like this, stores are usually overcrowded and understocked. So it's best to plan ahead and get what you need before the disaster. Now, if you have a lot of spiderlings, one thing you may want to consider doing is getting some large Rubbermaid totes. These are nice because they come with a lid and you can pack a lot of spiderling enclosures in there and you can use uh, newspaper, paper towels, old t-shirts, things like that and pack them around the spiderling enclosures so they'll be nice and secure and won't move. It makes it a lot easier and a lot safer to transport. Now your juveniles can be transported in much the same way. I would suggest getting some uh, painter's tape to seal up the lids so they're gonna stay firm on their enclosure. If you're adult tarantulas, you may wanna do something like invest in some 16 ounce deli containers and transfer them into those deli containers so that they have a safe place to be while you're transporting them. Though sometimes they can just stay in their enclosures. I moved my G. Rosea from South Dakota to West Virginia with it just seat belted in its enclosure. I just put it in the front seat and used a seat belt and held it in there and it lived for over a decade later so I don't think there was any irreversible damage. So to summarize you need to figure out where you're going to move your tees and also how you're going to move your tees. So go ahead and have the conversations, talk to people, get the commitments, figure out what your options are. It's a very muddy trail, I apologize. But also uh, go ahead and invest in getting some Rubbermaid containers and deli cups and everything that you're gonna need to transport them. Hopefully it's information and it's a plan you'll never need to use, but it's better to be prepared and not have to use it than to need it and not be prepared.
Well, I hope you found that informidable and helpful. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. I always appreciate that. And if you want to support the channel, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I upload any new videos in the future. If you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon. The link is below down in the description. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, you can join our Facebook group, The Tarantula Collective, to continue the conversation. As a member of the group, you do get 10% off all your purchases at fearnottarantulas.com. Just send a message to one of the moderators and they will hook you up with that code as it changes periodically. And as always, you can join our... My wife thinks I'm a little bit too close to the edge. I don't know. What do you all think? I don't know. Maybe she's right. So we're out here uh, filming the ending, climbing some rocks, and uh, my wife came across a snake. It was pretty exciting. here I was worried we weren't gonna find any wildlife as we were hiking around very last few moments of us filming out here came across a beautiful snake <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.